Hey, Gasper. So look, hey. um, I I am really enjoying. I've been really enjoying our, our our conversation about how to ask questions. And yes, I um I want to sort of open that up to you to just to just comment on a little bit because it strikes me that there are thousands of questions people ask every day and they don't always well let let, let me ask you this how do you ask questions how can we ask questions in a way that's going to work um when we're trying to influence someone we're trying to use you know coaching conversation hypnosis with them yes that's a great question richard And uh, thank you very much for asking me that. Uh, You know, I think that uh, most hypnotists, hypnotherapists um, are concerning themselves about what questions to Mm -hmm. ask. And uh, um, we are, um, so to say, uh, we are learning thousands of questions and we try to put one question into some kind of context when we are dealing with clients. But I think that it's not about what question to ask but it's about how the client responds to the question to the question we ask him or right. you know the client so it's about the response not about the question i can ask you any question i want but mm-hmm. uh, i have to see or observe the impact that the question has on you for example i can ask you richard how are you I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, you know, superficial answer. I, I would expect that you uh, that you say that. But really, Richard, just think about it. How are you, really? Well, I am I'm, I'm, I'm feeling very good, Gaspar. I've been feeling even better since I've been speaking with you this morning. Exactly. Thank you very much. But could you feel how more, uh, how this second answer came more from within you it wasn't so superficial and we could we could also see you know if if you uh, if you will take time and look at this recording uh, you can see that your eyes went a bit up and down and you kind of started thinking about okay how do i really feel Mm. and that is the unconscious moment that i need to catch and then perhaps deepen it if uh, that's appropriate so it it was the response that uh, created the real impact it's nice and i think what what i like is that i think um there's something about the way that you asked it yeah the second time especially where you are um you're kind of opening up an uh, an opportunity to go with something you know to go with something more so uh, you know and Yes. That was nice in the first one. Like you say, the first one was quite light and I'm feeling good. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. should we say it's more um if if I want to sk- it's maybe more from the head, more from more kind of conscious. The second exactly. answer, the second one is was more embodied because there's more time to think about it. There's more time to process that that question. There's more time to process it and yes. sort of feel the, you know, feel the response. And People di- are going to differ in their ability to process any question or suggestion that you give them. Yes. Can you? Um, what's your What's your view on um, questions as suggestions? Yeah, my my view on that theme is that uh, do as little suggestions as possible. You know, mm-hmm. in the sense of uh, wording or, uh, or, uh, yeah, suggesting sh- suggesting things. Uh, basically, I think that the best questions are, perhaps in general. You know, that's not uh, that's a rule, mm-hmm. but it can be bro- broken. Uh, also, uh, that the best questions tend to be um, short and non-suggestible. Right. The, the reason that sometimes questions feel feels like like they are suggestible is uh, perhaps that we need to create hypnotic context uh, if we want to um, 
get unconscious moments or if we want yes. to yeah you know so in that sense it is suggestible but not in a way that the question itself suggests something but that we suggest to the client that okay now is the time to go inside you know right. in some kind of hypnotic state and yes. answer from within so that's the Brilliant. suggestion that i'm looking for oh, okay so i uh, so if I hear you right, and this is sort of my experience, at least from the question you yes. we did before at the beginning, is um, if if we were sort of if we could have if there was like um, some subtitles for the the meta message, the power message, the intention behind it, the hypnotic sub communication, it would be something along the lines of go inside, like it would be more like a general suggestion, go yes. inside and process what I'm asking in a very particular way. I'd like you to open a class of ex embodied experiences within you where you deeply reflect and deeply uh, process this in a way that's right for you and see what happens. Yes. yes. When you tap into that deeper reservoir of potential within. Exactly. And actually, we can create that kind of context uh, really easily by suggesting, <laughs> by, <laughs> by suggesting, okay, Richard, now take some time and really think about the question that I'll ask you. Beautiful. So we really think about it. That that's the suggestion, basically. Beautiful. And so I'm waiting creates... now. I'm all primed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you know how, how often uh, we therapists uh, we, te we therapists ask uh, the client what's the problem, mm. and yeah. they tend to answer it, and um the first time that they answer it's kind it's kind of a superficial answer mm. they talk about the problem yes but it's not the real problem they are talking about conscious problem they are um, yes. some, they, they are captured in their their conscious mind mm -hmm. and that's why they are captured in their own problem beautiful but when we we could we, we could ask also the second time and this time uh, in a more hypnotic way no 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 just stop and really think about the question yes what is what is the problem really i i really like this and and you know what i'm going to use that now when i'm doing teaching at the university or i'm doing lead, leading if i'm doing any courses to say to people at the beginning look we're going to we're going to be discuss we're going to be going and considering this topic today what I'd like you to do is hold off any questions <laughs> until later on. I'd like to really think about it because here's the thing. One of the things I've observed in, um, say, uh, in day-to-day -day life, let's say whether yes. at home or office, is somebody says something. Yes. Well, I've heard this. I go to say something or ask a question. Before, I, I haven't even finished asking the question and the other person is responding yes. with what they think yes. is a solution. And I might just be reflecting on it. I haven't even finished asking the question. So it, it, it's exactly. people feel, first of all, they're rushing to respond, which does no one any good because it's just very, it stays at that conscious, superficial level, as, as you yes, call it. Yes. The other thing I think is with coaching as well, if they adopt the frame that you've suggested and you're doing a coaching session with people, a conversation, session with yes. your, or a therapy session where you're working over a period of time and you say at the outset, hey, look, I'm going to be asking you lots of questions here. All right. Yes. Here's what, here's the most important thing. There's no right or wrong answer to these questions. The key thing is to reflect on them. All right. When you reflect on them, it's like going to the gym and doing a longer workout. All right. Yes. It's going to take nice some metaphor. time. Yeah. It's going to take some time for those muscles to, to, if it's going to for your fitness to improve. It's okay. All I want you to do is to take your time thinking about those questions so sometimes i may ask the same question a couple of times yes just to help you reflect on that is that okay with you well i really like your metaphor and it's a really nice pre-frame that you can use when working with clients exactly exactly and if you think about it uh, that's what conversational hypnosis is all about it's not about some um uh, how to say uh, complex uh, language mm. and uh, some language patterns and so on but it's about how to invite clients to really think about things in a way yes. 
yes that they are not thinking about them usually yes so how how to, how to how to create the context where clients can think about things differently beautiful and that's it yeah i really like that you know it, it occurred to me the other day that um what we're doing and the benefit of hypnosis is you know if, in the old days people sort of saw hypnosis as something weird or, or mystical or yep. or not really maybe not really part of of day-to-day -day life but we know now that decisions are made unconsciously first so at least from from when we can re register you know look at the bright you look at the way the brain is and parts of the brain it will be activated before we're aware of it consciously so yes. uh, we know that the autonomic nervous system is super powerful we know that most of what happens inside us is, is in this vast storehouse of the unconscious mind. We know from communication, you know, whether you look from practical people like, you know, Chris Voss or, or whatever yeah, research yeah. you do, we know that that we're very, um, there's, that we have this unconscious that communicates emotionally and symbolically. Yet in our day-to-day -day lives, or should we say our social self, we act as though it's our conscious logical mind that runs the show. And yet everything mm -hmm. that we do in life, everything that we do in life is to satisfy these kind of these inner needs, these emotions, yes. all this kind of stuff. It, it's what drives us. So yes. we have the kind of emotional self, yep. our kind of, should yep. we say, our true self, and then we have the social self who who that we're doing, we that we have to kind of cultivate to be able to fit in with our culture and our society and to be able to get on. So this, exactly. they, they, both, exactly. they both have their roles. Yeah, yeah. But here's the thing, what we're doing, um, and... Um, let me know if this if if this sort of analogy works for you. But we're we're communicating, we're letting people, and we're staying at the level. We're still communicating amongst our social selves, that kind of veneer. But what we're doing is we're capturing the unconscious moments, if you're because what's yes. driving us, what's driving us is always the force, the 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 river of our unconscious, the yes. emotions. The symbolism, the desires, the the concerns, that's all there. And there's huge, huge potential in that, but it is like a very powerful river. So if we can slow people down enough yes. through using their through our questions, we can help them at the level of their, shall we say, social self in our kind of normal conversational day-to-day -day kind of way of doing things, to take that and channel that river and just move it in the direction that they want to go in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nicely, you put it really nice. Uh, uh, yeah, in a way that you said it. And um, I, I was thinking uh, about, you know, how one of the most hypnotic things that people can do is actually not asking questions, but listening to other people. Right. Now, yeah, you, you said it, how, how we tend to answer before even mm -hmm. the question is asked properly. But that's the that's the catch uh, when we ask questions the first question isn't really important what question it is but when we get the response it's really important that we are listening to our clients or you know to to our conversational partner so that we can catch those unconscious moment moments that tells us what is the most beneficial question to ask next right so so there is no use of preparing questions before the conversation before the therapy because when we have questions in our repertoire uh, that are prepared beforehand what happens we tend to you know uh, with force put those questions into the context even if they are not uh, uh, they're not uh, uh, they they don't work in that kind of context yes that's why that's why it's much more hypnotic and much better if we just listen to the client listen to the conversational partner and his signs those unconscious moments will tell us what question to ask next beautiful so it it, it sounds to me as though a big part of this is you can have a general, you need to have a general understanding of what you're trying to achieve. We're trying exactly. to move yeah. this, this torrent of energy, uh, this huge, vast amount of potential that people generally underestimate that they have in a particular direction. 
to do that, it is useful to understand principles. It's useful to understand the yeah. questions and how to ask them. But exactly. ultimately, what work, ultimately the most important part of implementing it is paying attention to the other person. Because yeah. then, yeah. well, then you'll it'll be much clearer what to ask. And also, at least from my point of view, you know, when you're asking questions, um, I feel listened to and cared for. Yeah, exactly. And you know what happens when people uh, feel listened and cared for? Their, let's say, analytical mind or critical fact factor or you know whatever you want to call it goes down. Yes. And their mind opens up. Yes. And and that is just because they feel listened to and cared for. Yes. And that's why that is so hypnotic. They, they 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 tend to not be so uh, analytical when they are listened to. And yes, now oh, mine open that up. is beautiful. Yeah. That is beautiful. And I, I I you just as you're saying that, Gaspar, you there was something that I really admired in you, and I just realised that I've seen it the opposite <laughs> in other people, and I, and I, and I kind of I think it might be really helpful for for other people who want to learn this. Just a real simple distinction and how how you can make, how the smallest things can make a huge difference. So when we were doing um, our session together, our last session, and, and many times when we've we've chatted, I'll say, uh, if yes. I say something, like let's say you ask a question, I say something, what you do is you'll go, oh, that's interesting. Or you'll smile, all right? And um, your fascination and interest and the fact that you've genuinely paying attention to what I've said makes my critical factor, my critical faculty, the analytical part of the mind come down more and more. And it makes me feel safe and it develops more and more trust. Now, uh, there's someone else I know. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, let's just call them a, a, um, a family friend. And they ask you something. It doesn't matter what it is. You say, oh, I went to the zoo. And, and then I said, well, which zoo did you go to? I said, oh, I went to, you know, London Zoo. And their yeah, reply yeah. is always the same. Oh. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Whatever you say. And it just completely kills that. You know, it, it makes you feel. Sounds like an awkward it, it, moment. What is that? It's an awkward yeah, yeah. moment. It makes you feel like you have done something wrong or it's not of interest or you've been judged for it. And they... In their mind, I know what it is because in their particular mind, they're looking for a very particular answer in a very particular way. Yeah, but, exactly. But but you know, it's like, oh, I wasn't interested now. I was I was only interested if you'd have told me this too, because I've just watched it on the television. But yeah, yeah, however, yeah. however, what that does is that kills that thing. And over time, I'm less keen to talk to that person about the things that I enjoy or the experiences that I've had. Because who wants to be giving? Who wants to be telling other somebody else about yes. the things that they're enthusiastic or trying to resolve or the challenges they have when the other person just cuts them down, advises them, talks over them, or has some kind of judgment? So the yes. antidote to that is really simple. Like you say, pay attention yes. to what they're saying. And exactly. whenever they say it, just be cheerful be be interested be curious you know yes and uh, so i really I, I really like that i just wanted to say it because you did it so well and you do that so well that it makes it easy for me to continue it makes it easy for the person you're working with i think we want to share more because there's an there's, there's a there's a wider suggestion which is hey whatever you tell me it's good it's going to be helpful and interesting and we can use this. We can do something with it. Yes, exactly. And listen to this. In that state of mind, you are actually looking forward to the questions that I might ask you. And, yes. you know, in the example of a uh, um, family friend, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you are actually uh, don't waiting. You're not looking forward to the questions that he mm -hmm. might ask you because, you know, yes. Whatever he asks you, your mind is closed down and mm -hmm. there's no real uh, juice in your answer because, you know, you just won't give it to him. Mm -hmm. And that's why 
you know, uh, listening is so important because when yes. we really listen to and take care of our clients, our conversational partners, then uh, the questions that we ask have somewhere to land. Beautiful. They are, you know, they are, they are, they are really, um, they have impact. Yes. In that way. Yeah, and I, I, I think that's the key. And I think if I was, if I was to at this point if i was to sort of highlight a principle to internalize i think it is that idea of pay attention to the other person and just remember that the way that you demonstrate that you're paying attention to them is the care and attention that you give with your non-verbal responses to that person also your verbal responses but the tone of voice that you use, the way that you might smile, and the fact that you, you know, if if when I give you an answer, you stay curious and fascinated, then it tells me a couple of things. One, it's saying, I'm doing well, and this yes. person's going to take care of me. And two, I feel competent that I can do this. I feel competent that I'm succeeding and I want to continue in well, the conversation. I want to continue giving information. And that competence, that competence starts to expand yes. out with a sense of like, um, I'm something important is happening here. Yes. Something significant is happening. And I can feel it happening. And like as the as the the um the person being coached, the person, you know, within the therapy, though, the person having the conversation, I don't know exactly why. I just know that something good's happening. And the more that I reply back to Gasper, the more that I reply back to the yeah, person who's yeah, asking yeah. questions, the better I'm feeling. And this wow. is a great, great place to be. And I just wanted to flag that up because I think you did such a good job of um, of doing that. And I th that um, that principle of just um, be present, yeah. listen to the other person, and let them know mm -hmm. through the way that you you are replying back on the the way that you are paying attention to what they're saying that's fundamental once you get once you have that in place then everything else will follow tend to follow really nicely wow great great so gasper thank you so much for for for, for this look we will go back into this obviously yeah in, in yeah, more, yeah. In, in, exactly. in more detail um, but i really think this is really think this is super useful any kind of um uh final comments you want to make just enjoy conversations and listen to your conversational partner. Beautiful. And that's it. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Gasper. Thank you. Bye.